Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, inshallah, today we start to yani, have some lectures for the quantitative analysis course. Just a quick review, we start introducing linear programming and mainly we introduced how to formulate the problems in the linear programming structure. بدأنا في الدراسات الكمية أو الكورس بتاع الدراسات الكمية الفرقة الأولى إن إحنا نتكلم على البرمجة الخطية وأخذنا كيفية الصياغة how to formulate the linear programming or how to formulate the problem in the linear programming structure. سريعا كويك يعني reminding for you إنه قلنا الابلكيشن ده كان example for the two types of machines produced type A و type B أخذنا how to formulate in the linear programming structure. Uh, very simply, we said linear programming structure. First, you have to identify decision variables. In that application, can a decision variable so a number of machines from type A or number of machines of type B? You said can be X1 or X2 or can be ZY, whatever. And then we extract the information. We can then form the linear programming. Can the objective function maximize the profit equal 600 X1? Plus 1000 x2. Based on that application, يعني we can formulate or we can explain the idea that can be the profit. يعني it's given that for you in the profit for type A is 600 for each one, and profit for each one or each machine from type B is 1000. We said that the profit as a function of the decision variables. So now the objective function. دالة الهدف زي ما قلنا الـ objective function equal 600 times number of machines from type A plus 1000 times the number of machines of type B with that objective function. And then we have some information about the production process. We said we have two we have two phases of that production process. We said we have a painting and we have a polishing. And then we have a number of hours for each machine. Like a machine of type A needs six hours of painting and two hours of polishing. In the same way, a machine of type B requires six hours of painting and four hours of polishing. In that case, we have two conditions. We have two constraints. We have two, limit, we have two limits to maximize the profit. But our objective to maximize the profit, yes, that we have some constraints. In first, we have constrained the total hours for the painting. It's for 84 hours. The second constraint, we have hours for the paint for the polishing. It's 40 hours, and we have another constraint that the number of machines of type A it's not more than 10. Based on this information, first we have a profit as objective function that equals 600 plus 1,000. 600 x1 plus 1000 x2 that x1 the number of machines of type a or number of machines from or of type b then we have two constraints for the availability of the painting and polishing hours we have one constraint for the number of machines of type a we have three structural constraints if i return back for the solution Return back for the solution. Just to remind you, just just to remind you with the solution, in order to maximize, we can maximize the profit. We can maximize the profit that we have 600 x1 plus 1000 x2, subject to three constraints. We have two constraints. We have two constraints for the painting and polishing. The first one for the painting, six. We have seven x1 plus six x2. Seven x1, which means we have a total hours for the painting for machines of type A, 7x1. If x1, the number of machines from type A, with 7, it, the each, each machine of type A requires actually or needs 7 hours. The plus 6x2, x2, the X2, number of machines from type B, and we have a value 6 for each machine of type B, we, uh, it needs actually 6 hours for the painting. If 7x1 plus 6x2, that the total hours for the painting for the machines that has to be has to be less than or equal sorry has to be less than not greater than has to be less than not greater than has to be less than 48 in the same 2x1 plus 4x2 has to be less than or equal 40 if total hours the total hours 
uh, for the polishing for the machines has to be less than or equal 40. Why? Because the maximum hours available for the polishing is 40. And then we have X1 has to be less than. I think there's something with the PowerPoint reversing a sign. And if you ever in the PowerPoint, there is a sign that in just you can yani, edit that. If a X1 less than or equal 10, that means a number of machines of type A has to be less than or equal 10. And then we adding from our side, as we said, we are adding from our side a non-negative non-negative constraint that in x1 greater than or equal zero, x2 greater than or equal zero. X1 greater than or equal zero, that means the number of machines of type A has to be non-negative values to have realistic solution actually. Okay, so guarantee that we have realistic solution for that linear programming problem. Okay, so now that the revision for how to formulate. If we had that example, how to formulate linear programming, or how to formulate any problem in the linear programming structure. If in general, what we have now, it's linear programming structure. We have objective function first, and then subject to structural constraints, and then we are adding from our side a non-negative non constraints, okay? Now we formulated the problem in the linear programming structure. Second step, how to solve that? Solution. What is the value? What is the value of x1 and what is the value of x2 that maximizing profit? Now we have a profit equal 600 x1 plus 1000 x2. Okay, and we have some structural constraints. Based on that, I need to find the value of x1 and the value of x2 that maximizing the profit and at the same time, satisfying the structural constraints. If we value the kida, naizin qiyam x1 and x2, we try to maximize the profit. And in the same time, we try to achieve the qiyud, the haykaliya, the present. And in the same time, the qiyam x1 and x2 is actually non-negative. So we have a solution that is clear and obvious. That we say kida, the number of machines from type A has a value, and the number of machines from type B has a value. The value of this value is maximizing the profit, and at the same time, you can satisfy the constraints, or you can get the value of the value, or the value of the value of the value. Okay, there are different solutions. Today, as we saw in the title, we will talk about the graphical solution for the linear programming. Today, we will talk about the solution for the linear programming. الحقيقة أنا حاول يعني حاول أبسط القضية خالص هنحط ستيبس معينة وبعدين نبدأ نطبق عليها الأبلكيشن ده وأي مشكلة لينير بروجرامينج ستراكشر كان بي سولف ان سيم واي يعني بنفس الطريقة نقدر نحل أي مشكلة في بوينت هنا عايز أأكد عليها أنا بحل على الكيس إنه وي ار ماكسمايزنج بروفيت نفس الستيبس هي هي هنعملها في أي كيس سواء ماكسمايزنج بروفيت أو مينيمايزنج كوست أو مينيمايزنج تايم يعني وات ايفر الأوبجيكتيف that you need to optimize, we have the same steps in the case of the graphical solution. That, but now we need to summarize. The graphical solution steps, step one, we need to transform constraints to be equations, and for each equation, find two points. Our step is to change the equations that are in a way 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 that two points. We have a linear equation, وزي ما قلنا قبل كده اللينير ايكويشن محتاج ليها على الاقل كام؟ 2 بوينتس تو بلوت او تو فيجواليز ذات ايكويشن يبقى اول ستيب هنحول القيود الى معادلات ونضيف ونجيب لكل معادله نقطتين. ستيب 2 بلوت ذا ايكويشن اند هايلايت اند ذن فايند ذا سوليوشن اريا اوف ذا فيزيبل ريجن. الستيب 2 هنرسم اللاينز بتاعتنا او الكونسترينتس ونعمل عمليه تحديد للسوليوشن اريا أو الأريا اللي بتحقق القيود دي بنسميها الفيزيبل ريجون يبقى الفيزيبل ريجون دي ريجون ذات ساتسفاينج اول ذا كونسترينتس ان ذا ان ذا جراف وهنشوف ده في التطبيق بتاعنا. ستيب 3 هناخد الايه الفيزيبل ريجون اللي هي كورنر بوينتس اللي هي النقاط التقاطعات هناخد البوينتس دي هنسميها الكورنر بوينتس هناخدها ونعمل سبستيتيوشن وهنعوض فيه الاوبجكتيف فانكشن وبعدين الكورنر بوينتس دي ماثيماتيكالي وي كان ماثيماتيكالي وي كان بروف ذات إنه ال corner points one of them maximizing the objective function and one of them minimizing the objective function. هنشوف مع بعض لكن أنا اللي ميني في السلايد ده إن تبع عارف إن the graphical solution هو ال can be in three steps ثلاث خطوات. ال step one نحاول المعادلات المتبينات لمعادلات ونجيب نقطة تل كل معادلة. step two هنرسم المعادلات دي ونعمل highlight according to the sign. step three 
هنعوض هنجيب الكورنر بوينتس ونعوض في داله الايه الهدف او الاوبجكتيف فانكشن طيب نبدا خطوه خطوه يبقى كل اللي جاي في المحاضره هنعمل ابلكيشن للستبس اللي قدامنا دي step 1 transform the equations to be inequality sorry transform constraints to be equations انا عندي the first constraint can 7 x1 plus 6 x2 less than or equal ده كان اصل الايه constraint constraint can 7 x1 plus 6 x2 less than or equal 84 transform it to be equation يبقى 7 x1 plus 6 x2 equal 84 And find two points for the, from this equation. This equation, we need to find two points. How to find two points for any linear equation, as we had before? On the kind of the team, you know, we need to substitute when, with one 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 value for x, one then find the value of x2. A simple or easier way, you are plotting x1 equals zero. If you have x1 equals zero from this equation, you'll find x2 equal 84 divided by six. 84 divided by six equal 14. You have point one zero and 14. The second point, you can put any value for x2 and then find the value of x1. Now we can put x2 equal 0. Then if you have x2 equal 0 from this equation, you'll find x1 equal 84 divided by 7. 84 divided by 7 equal 12. The second point, 12 and 0. It's enough to have two points. If you have linear equation, it's enough to have only two points to plot, to plot this equation. Second, the second constraint, 2x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal. That main constraint. If I 2x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal 40. Now transform to the equation. Now from this equation or for this equation, we need to find two points to plot it because it's linear equation. The same way. If I first plot x1 equal 0, then you'll find x2 equal 10. From this equation, look, if I'm plotting x1 equal 0, x2 40 over 4 equal 10. If I first point 0 and 10. Uh, putting x2 equal 0, we'll find x1 equal 12, uh, 20. That uh, from the first equation, uh, 2 x1 plus 0 equal 40, then x1 equal 40 over 2, it will be 20. If I now we have the second point, it's a 20 and 0. If I these two points, we can use them to plot the second constraint, our second equation now, and we'll see how to highlight. The last constraint, x1 less, x1 less than or equal 10. The third constraint in x1 less than or equal 10. Actually, x1 equal 10. We don't need any point because x1 equal 10. It's very very simple. You can have one line at x1 equal 10 to be actually vertical line. Okay, that would be vertical line at x1 equal 10 for that constraint. It's a very simple constraint. We don't need any points uh, to uh, visualize or plot this constraint. This is the three constraints. Now step one finalized. Step one in we are plotting. Yeah, we're transforming constraints to be equations and finding two points for each linear equation. That's step one, kida, it's finalized. Step two, we need to plot these equations. Yeah, step two, we, need it, we can use the points to plot or visualize the lines for the equations and then highlight accordingly. Highlight, I will see what the meaning of highlight accordingly. Okay, then step two, I need to visualize. How to visualize, you have to you have two variables, you have two decision variables, x1 and x2, then we have an x axis and we have a y axis. Now, if we return back for the last slide, what is the maximum value for x1 and x2 from these points? For these points, we have a maximum value for x1, actually, it's a 20. And the maximum value for x2, it's 14. Yeah, but then we can put the scale, x axis, y axis, the scale, including in values 20 and 40. You can make it a maximum as 20 or 30, whatever. Actually, I'm putting that, I'm doing that for X1 to be 30. If a maximum 20, I'm putting that to be 30. For X2 maximum 14, I'm doing that to be 50. If we the scale, if we the scale, if we have 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 the scale, النقاط دي اللي هي الموجودة بشكل بسيط بنعمل فيكسنج سكيل يعني بنخليه مسطرة بحيث انه يكون محتوى على كل النقاط بتاعته كده انا عملت فيكسنج سكيل من ال x1 مشيت 5 by 5 لغاية 30 وال x2 برضه 5 by 5 لغاية 15 then we have the scale to include all the values نبدا كده ال constraints بتاعتنا عايز نحط ال constraints كلها كده دي ال constraints بتاعتي نلاحظ حاجة مهمة جدا ان ال constraints عندي 3 structural constraints وعندي كمان النون نيجاتيف كونسترينتس 
برضه في حاجه حاصله هنا انا ملاحظ انه الساينز معكوسه ناخد بالنا هنا السايز دي معكوسه المفروض تبقى ليس دان ليس دان ليس دان ان جريتر دان في مشكله في البرزنتيشن او الباوربوينت عامل هنا ريفيرس للسايز مفيش مشكله اللي بقى عارفين بس انها ليس دان نوت جريتر دان يعني هنا الاشارات معكوسه طيب اول السيمبل النون نيجاتيف كوليسترينز الحقيقه عايز اكد على البوينت دي عشان ما نقولهاش تاني كتير في اي مساله في اي مساله النون نيجاتيف كوليسترينز اللي هم دول دايما بيخليني ارسم في الفيرست كوارت دايما بنرسم في الربع الاول ده ليه؟ لان الـ X1 هتبقى بوزيتيف والـ X2 بوزيتيف وبالتالي انا الجراف دايما هيبقى فين؟ في الفيرست كوارتر في الربع الاول ده ده الربع اللي هيبقى فيه الايه الرسم بتاعه يبقى انا دلوقتي ممكن الغي خالص النون نيجاتيف كونسترينتس دي وابقى عارف ان انا بالنون نيجاتيف كونسترينتس هنرسم فين؟ في الربع الاول يبقى انا محتاج ارسم كام لاين في البروبلم دي محتاجين نرسم 3 لاينز I need one line for the first constraint, or second line for the second constraint, or last line for the last constraint. Actually, x1, x1, less than or equal 10, as we said, that is very simply, you have vertical line at x1 equal 10, and then you can highlight. Okay, so just we can do that very simply. So, If based on that graph, we are plotting only. If based on these two conditions, if we are plotting this area, highlight now the question. The constraints, it's inequality. It's not equation. Actually, the قيود بتاعتنا نا كانت متبينات. If after plotting the line, we need to highlight. هنا إحنا يعني we have to have agreement how to highlight. That constraint is greater than or equal as we said. That x1 greater than equal zero, x2 greater than equal zero. If now I need to plot in this quarter, I'm highlighting a reverse or against the sign. And at the moment, I'm doing the opposite of the sign. So what is the meaning of that? And I'm just highlighting at the moment. Now I'm just highlighting the shape of that. That means that all that area it's not included now with me. The part that's not included is not included with me. I'm just highlighting the part that's not included with me. That means that the first two constraints. انا هحطهم فوق هنا معناها اني ناو هايلايتنج اجينست سايد انا هعمل تظليل عكس اشاره القيد الاصلي بتاعي في المساله القيد نون نيجاتيف كونسترينس كانت اكس 1 جريتر ذان 0 اور ايكوال اكس 2 جريتر ذان اور ايكوال 0 يبقى احنا هنا اكوردنجلي هنرسم فين في الربع ده طب بعمل هايلايتنج عكس الاشاره طب انا حد يقول لي ليه بتعمل هايلايت اجينست سايد ليه مش مع السايد اثنين صح من اول المساله لو انت عملت هايلايت مع الاشاره هتبقى في الاخر منطقه الحل هي المنطقه المظلله من كل القيود ولو من اول المساله ظللت عكس الاشاره هيبقى الحل النهائي في الاخر بالنسبه لك هو المنطقه غير المظلله ان هايلايت الاري ده اتفاق انا بفضل ان احنا نعمل تظليل اجينست الساين عكس الاشاره ليه هيبقى في الاخر الان هايلايت اريا الجزء الابيض المنطقه الغير مضلله تبقى هي منطقه الحل وتبقى اسهل في التحديد تبقى اسهل في التحديد خلاص هو دايما هيبقى عندك منطقه الحل فين في الربع الاول ليه بيكوز اوف ذا نون نيجاتيف كونسترينتس ان اور ابلكيشنز وي سيد ان ذا بزنس ابلكيشنز وي ار بوتنج ان نون نيجاتيف كونسترينتس تو جارانتي ذات يو هاف رياليستيك سوليوشن فور وات يو هاف يبقى دايما منطقه الحل عندك تبقى في الربع الاول وهي المنطقة غير المظللة if you are highlighting against the sign ده أنا بالنسبة لي شايف ده أسهل عشان كده أول point بعد ما حددت ال x1 وال x2 عملت السكيل هحدد الربع الأول وأعمل هايلايت ال a ال area that for the other quarters خلاص؟ طيب now نبدأ نرسم ال constraints الأصلية أو ال structural constraints نبدأ نرسم ال structural constraints أول ال structural constraint الحقيقة هو x1 greater than less sorry Ten and two. I mean, each time I will remind you that less than or equal. That greater than and that greater than. If x one less than or equal ten, معناه كده إنه x one equal ten. That line أهو. Line بتاعنا x one equal ten. وبعدين highlight against the sign. What x أصل sign أو the sign for the structural constraints إنه less than. If against the sign, if a to the right. Just very simple. يعني that is very simplified way. If I now according to non-negative constraints, and according to one structural constraints, x1 less than or equal 10, 
تبقى عندي بالنسبه لي السناوي الان هايلايتد اريا هي السوليوشن اريا فور ذيس كونسترينتس خلاص يبقى فور ذيس ثري كونسترينتس تبقى الان هايلايتد اريا تبقى هي بالنسبه لي ايه السوليوشن سوليوشن اريا ستيل وي هاف تو كونسترينتس يبقى احنا وي دونت فاينلايز السوليوشن انا قلت لنا في عندي ستيل في تو كونسترينتس اللي هم اكشولي الفيرست والسكند كونسترينت اتس نوت تيل ناو يعني بلوتد وي نيد تو بلوت ذيم اوكي يبقى الستيل الريمينينج كونسترينتس We have two constraints remaining. The first constraint is 7x1 plus 6x2 less than less than or equal 84. 2x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal 40. We need to plot them. How to plot them? As we said, we have for each constraint two points. If I need to plot the first constraint, I need to find the two points on the graph and then a straight line. That's what we have now. So very simply, just we can highlight that. So. The first point 040. 040 actually it will be on the on the graph on the y-axis. The second point 120. 120 on the x-axis. That be point 120. So now a straight line crossing these two points. Then we are plotting the a. The first we are plotting the first constraint. Okay. So we can do that. So very simply, a straight line crossing a two points. Though then we have now the first constraint after the three. And now we're adding the first constraint seven x one plus six x two. So highlighting against the sign. Still, we have the same. If I have agreement that if you are highlighting against the sign, then you have to highlight all the constraints against the sign. That means you are highlighting all this area. If I let the highlighted area now, all that is highlighted. All that is highlighted. Only we have unhighlighted area, this area. If according to the four constraints, this is the solution area till now. Okay? Still, we don't have all the constraints. Still, we have one constraint left, and then we need to plot that constraint. This is the two points to plot that constraint. If I have now to add two points on that graph, and then, add, and then we have a straight line crossing points, If we can add this point just to finalize the graph. So now in that constraint, we have indeed two points, 0, 10, that 0, 10 on the y-axis, 20, 0 on the y, on the x-axis, uh, one line crossing at points D, one line crossing at points. So now we have the graph including all the constraints. Now I need to discuss some points in that graph. If I, on that graph, just we can finalize the last slide. Okay, just we can discuss now in details. So, so now we have five constraints. The first two constraints are non-negative area, that in non-negative constraints. And then in x, one less than or equal 10, that the constraint, highlighted. And then we have one constraint, 7x, 1 plus 6x2, less than or equal 48. And then we have 2x, 1 plus 4x2, less than or equal 40, that highlighted. So now I'm highlighting against the sign. بأكد تاني أنا بعمل تظليل عكس الإشارة. يبقى كل الأريا highlighted مع هذا that part that we have. That area that we have. This is the solution area. I will name it as the feasible region. The feasible region, that region satisfying the conditions or satisfying the constraints. بالبلد المنطقة دي بتحقق القيود الهيكلية بتاعتنا. طيب إحنا our objective only satisfy constraints or we need to maximize the profit لا احنا عايزين the values of x1 و x2 تعمل حاجتين first maximize the profit second satisfy the constraints او the structural and non-negative constraints انا عايز قيم x1 و x2 اللي رقم واحد تحقق للقيود كلها رقم اتنين تعمل تعظيم للربح في المسألة بتاعتنا دي طبعا في بعض المسائل الاخرى ممكن تعمل تقليل او تصغير للتكلفه. طيب هنا mathematically we can prove that the points for this area بنسميها corner points او intersection points. The corner points for this area one of them maximize the objective function and one of them minimize the objective function. عايزين نقول ايه؟ ان الاريا دي كلها اوكي مهمه وهي دي feasible region لكن الحقيقه the corner points او نقاط التقاطعات هي المهمه. ليه؟ لانه بتوع الماثيماتكس اثبتوا ان الكورنر بوينتس دي اولا هي بتحقق القيود كلها 
ورقم اثنين ان 1 بوينت نقطه منهم بتعمل تعظيم لداله الهدف وفي نفس الوقت نقطه برضه ثانيه منهم بتعمل تصغير لداله الهدف يبقى انا اي هاف تو فايند ذا بوينتس دي طبعا الكورنر بوينتس لاحظ الكورنر بوينتس فور ذا ان هايلايتد اريا انا عايز النقاط التقاطعات للمنطقه الغير مضلله مش اي نقاط يعني البوينت دي مش معايا والبوينت دي مش معايا خلاص نوت انكلودد ليه انا عايز الكورنر بوينتس فور ان هايلايتد اريا بيكوز وي ار هايلايتنج اجينست الساين يعني البوينت دي مش معايا برضه خلاص يعني مش كل النقاط لا ده انا عايز النقاط اللي فين في المنطقه غير المضلله بيكوز وي ار هايلايتنج اجينست الساين انا كنت بضلل عكس الاشاره وبالتالي المنطقه الغير مضلله في الربع الاول هي اللي هتكون منطقه الحل او الفيزيبل ريجن بالنسبه لي طيب البوينتس دي اديها ارقام اديها سوري اديها نيمز نوتيشنز رمزها يعني ديتا ميز تبقى البوينت دي انا مثلا انا حد مثلا دي بوينت A B C D and E فايند الفاليوز هنا اول تشالنج بعد البلوت او الجراف انك تطلع النقاط دي سم بوينتس كليرلي تو فايند يعني النقطه E واضحه قوي انها 0 0 فالنقطه E ناو از 0 0 البوينت A واضح جدا انها ايه 0 10 فهي اتس 0 10 البوينت D واضح جدا انها 0 سوري ال A it's 10 0 وال D 0 10 يبقى ال D بالنسبه لي 0 10. The two points اللي هم C وال D sometimes it's not easy to find it from the graph ليه؟ لانه هنا الجراف لو نوت اكيوريت هتبقى صعب تطلعها يعني مثلا انا عندي هنا ال point B واضح جدا X1 ب 10 لكن X2 can be approximated. ال X2 almost 2 point something خلاص يعني X2 2 point something طبعا I cannot find it clearly from the graph لو عندك الجراف accurate يعني بتعمل رسم دقيق ممكن تطلعها تلاقيها almost تقريبا 2.3 اوكي okay. طب نفترض الرسم بتاعي او الجراف مش اكيوريت هعمل ايه؟ هتاخد هنا التو لاينز دول كانهم تو اكويجنز وذ تو انونز وتعمل لهم سوليوشن يعني النقطه دي تقاطع مين؟ معادلتين خطين كل خط المعادله خد المعادلتين دول وحلهم كانك بتحل معادلتين في مجهولين جبريا عادي جدا يبقى سولفنج يبقى تو اكويجنز وذ تو انون فاليوز خلاص طبعا الـ الـ ده اللاين الازرق كان بتاع x1 equal 10 طب واللاين الثاني ده ده كان بتاع 6x 7x1 6x2 equal 84 طبعا اشيلنا equation دلوقتي خلاص لان اللاين ده هو equation لكن with the highlight ده هو الانيكواليتي او الكونسترين يبقى البوينت ثاني اكيد البوينت بي كانت بين x1 equal 10 خلاص يبقى قيمه النقطه بي انا عارف ان x1 equal 10 طب ال x2 عوض في الايه في الايكويشن بتاعه اللاين ده اللاين ده كان الفيرست كونسترين بالنسبه لنا لو فاكرين وكان 7x1 plus 6x2 equal 84 لو عوضت في 7x1 plus 6x2 equal 84 you'll find ان ال x2 equal 2.3 يبقى البوينت بي دلوقتي 10 و 2.33 اوكي ابروكسيميت 2.33 اللاست بوينت ال سي يعني اتس نوت ايزي تو فايند ات اوت لكن موستلي ابروكسيميت تقريبا ماشي على الفاليو 6 اولموست يعني والفاليو 7 تقريبا لكن عايز اجيبها اكيوريت هاخد التو كونسترينتس دول واحلهم كانهم معادلتين في مجهولين ده كان الكونسترينت الاول الفيرست كونسترينت كان 7x1 6x2 84 والسكند كونسترينت كان 2x1 4x2 equal 40 لما تعمل لهم سوليوشن كانهم معادلتين في مجهولين جبريا عادي هتلاقي البوينت سي بتساوي 6 و 7 يعني x1 ب 6 و x2 ب 7 يبقى دلوقتي جبنا الكورنر بوينتس دي خلاص اصبح الكورنر بوينتس دي اللي هم دول بالنسبه لنا one of them one of them maximizing the objective function one of them minimizing the objective function طبعا احنا our objective في المساله هنا مش minimize objective function احنا we are maximizing profit يبقى now we need to find the point that maximizing the objective uh, objective function اوكي okay? يبقى انا هاخد ال points leaf table واحط ال objective function جنبهم كده يعني ممكن اعمل كده واحط ال objective function اللي كانت 600x1 لو فاكرين كانت 600x1 plus 1000x2 واعمل substitution عادي جدا واشوف فين ال point اللي بتعمل maximize تبقى هي السوليوشن طيب هنشوف ده في السلايد اللي جاي نشوف ده حالة في السلايد اللي جاي اهو عندي البوينتس بتاعتي A B C D E اللي جبناهم عندي البروفيت ده الاوبجيكتيف فانكشن بعمل سبستيتيوشن الحقيقه السبستيتيوشن دايركت دايركت سبستيتيوشن في لينير ايكويشن عادي جدا 
ال x1 هنا ب 10 وال x2 ب 0 يبقى 6 تايمز طبعا هي 600 سوري هي 600 اوكي okay. هي 600 just we can that uh, not 6 600 the plus that's 600 يعني اللي هي substitution just to be clear, clear 600 times x1 plus 1000 times x2 يديك الفيرست بوينت يدينا الاوبجيكتيف فانكشن 6000 السكند بوينت 8330 الثيرد 10600 and the giving you 10000 ال e 0 why because you have x1 equal 0 x2 equal 0 طبعا it's very clear that in the point c maximizing maximizing objective function our objective to maximize Assuming our objective to minimize, if I not the e, that the optimal solution. If I now our optimal solution that we have in the x1 equal, we have x1 equal 6 and x2 equal 7, and now the maximum profit equal 10,600. That indeed, the how to solve graphically, how to solve graphically the linear programming, as we said, three steps again, first transform. It'll, it'll transform constraints to the equation and find two points. Second, plot. Second, plot the constraints and highlight. That the main point. Second, plot the constraints or equations and highlight. Highlight against the sign. I prefer that, but you can uh, you can highlight uh, according to the sign. Okay. After highlighting, step three: find the corner points and substitute in the objective function. And if you are maximizing, find the maximum value. If you are minimizing, find the minimum value. In a few some points, I have to summarize. In the graphical solution, have some advantage. The first advantage, you know, it's simple, easy. Uh, actually, it's simple and easy. This, but we have some disadvantage. The first disadvantage, we cannot use the graphical solution if you have more than two decision variables. If I have application or method, we have that I have x1 and x2. We can call them decision variables. If you have more than two decision variables, we cannot use. The graphical solution. If you have one main advantage and one main disadvantage, we mainly discuss linear programming using the graphical solution to explain the idea what is the meaning that you are solving a linear programming and find the optimal solution. The head of the graphical solution, we are trying to show what is the solution to the graphical solution and we find the solution. Here are the two points. Those are the values six to seven. For x one, you will find them. They are maximizing the profit. The one one point. The second point, you know, they are satisfying the constraints. Um, a positive, you are satisfying the negative constraints. The amount substitution for the structural constraints, I think all the structural constraints actually satisfy. The only third structural constraint can x1 less than or equal 10. You'll find the value of x1 equal 6. You are satisfied. The first constraint can 7x1 plus 6, 7x1 plus 6x2. That list then equal 84. لو أنت عملت substitution حتى الآية يس list then 84 and and so on. إذا أنا هنا عملنا we actually obtain the optimal solution for this linear programming. دي كان تلخيص محاضرة إزاي نحل بيانيا. The point المهمة جدا إنه لو عندي مسألة minimize the cost it will be in the same way. بنفس الطريقة لكن the last step هي تفرق هتختار the minimum not the maximum if you are minimizing the cost or minimizing the time. شكرا لكم وبالتوفيق ان شاء الله